making up for a down payment is a really big task. It's been a barrier for as long as I've been doing this over 30 years. When you really think about it, to buy a home, there's very common barriers that every family has, usually credit, debt, and savings. And we really look at savings because to buy a home, it's very important to have a down payment. So here at HomeWise, we work really hard with families and one-on-one -on -one to become successful homeowners. Oftentimes we think of affordable housing as what does it cost you to build a home or it's like what's the, the bricks and sticks to it. Affordable housing is a little more complicated than that really. So one is what is the home cost and can someone afford it but a huge thing that determines affordability is what does it cost you to borrow money to buy the house, right? So your financing is a big important part of it as well. So oftentimes when we think of affordable housing, we immediately start thinking about rental housing. How do you make rental housing cheaper? A subsidized apartment, a rent voucher that subsidizes the rent. But if you buy a home, the biggest part of your housing expense, as long as you use a fixed rate mortgage, is held constant, right? So your principal and interest payment, it doesn't, it's not subject to inflation. It's the same amount every month for 30 years. Uh, the only thing that can go up with inflation is your taxes and insurance costs. 100% of your rent is subject to inflation. So over time, homeowners always pay less portion of their income to housing than people that rent. So if you really want to help people achieve housing affordability over the long term, best way to do it is own your own housing. Our congresswoman here in New Mexico, Congresswoman Teresa Ledger Fernandez, she had the opportunity to do something bold. And we talked to her about this. And the reason I say it's bold is because there's something called community project funding, which are usually used for bricks and mortar projects, hence the word project in the name. But I said, what if we structure this to where it is down payment assistance or a home ownership assistance voucher to help them get into home ownership. She has accepted a proposal from HomeWise for $750,000. That's never been done before with these types of funds. I'm Congresswoman Teresa Ledger Fernandez, and I have the honor of representing the beautiful and beautifully diverse 3rd Congressional District of Nuevo Mexico. I grew up in Las Vegas, New Mexico, and my mom and dad's family are from the small villages that surround Las Vegas. Things like Colonias and Villanueva and San Agustin and Lourdes and, um, you know, the ranches and farmlands that really make up what northern New Mexico has historically found as its strength in terms of its cultura and herencia. That's uh, where I'm from. I was on the HomeWise board for a very long time. I always point out that I joined the board when my first born was, uh, I was still on maternity leave, and I got uh, elected to Congress and therefore left the board. <laughs> 23 years later, yeah. So we all know that the United States spends significant money that's very important to spend to assist families, individuals who can't afford rent in their community. And so we issue something called Section 8 vouchers or choice vouchers, and they allow people to go and find a place to rent, and then the federal government's program helps people make the rent. But when you think about that, is if we could have that person buy a home and give a voucher to buy that home, that rent is stabilized. Because you no longer have rent. You have a fixed payment. It's the biggest, most important way that a family can build wealth is through home ownership. It's probably the biggest purchase we'll all make in our lifetime. And so historically in this country, racial minorities are always a step behind in achieving the same rate of success in home ownership as our white counterparts. So our African American, Native American, Hispanic families, the trend still continues. There, there is quite a gap in the home ownership rate, which equals the gap in wealth. So the wealth gap that we're trying to address, if we can use those community project funds in this way, which we are and we can in partnership with a Congresswoman, it's a game changer.
My work has focused on affordable housing, affordable housing development, specifically with tribal communities. I've lived in Santa Fe for the past going on 11, 12 years and wanted to be more proactive in the housing work happening in this community. And HomeWise was a model of those doing really great work in the affordable housing home ownership space and felt that I could maybe both learn and offer what I've learned in the development realm. HomeWise, to my knowledge, is the only lender of the HUD-184 loan guarantee in the state of New Mexico. To have a, an organization doing that locally here in New Mexico, here in Santa Fe, is, is pretty powerful. How are we growing native home ownership in the state it has been a challenge, and having a local organization trying to tackle that is, is great. You know, the conventional wisdom in home building is that the main product home builders build is a three-bedroom, two-bath house, right? Especially if you're thinking of entry-level kind of homes. But what people need is way more varied than that. People need different things at different stages in life. So at HomeWise, we've had a huge push to provide more options for people. So we'll do a one-bedroom condominium. We have a one-bedroom single-family detached home. I'm on a smaller lot because you don't need as big a lot for that. We'll do, we always do a four-bedroom house for larger families. We're doing more live-work. And the other thing is we just think that mixed-income communities are better. We think it's good that people live next to each other. We think it's good that, you know, the person who can afford a $700,000 house um, has a neighbor who is probably teaching their kids. You know, having these class divides in neighborhoods we don't think is, is healthy. Everybody is stronger. If we, if we work together and live together and pursue a common purpose together. Often when a housing developer comes in, they tend to be like, we know best. Like, this is what affordable housing should be. This is how we should be developing housing. And you all should fit into this, like, this narrow definition of what housing should be. When I think about community-based design, it's about getting out into the community trying to understand what are the needs, how do people have access to jobs, are they living next to their places of work, how do they commute, how can housing make that more viable. And so all that is like designing around the individual, designing around the family, making sure that the family has access to the assets that really make community successful, schools, hospitals, clinics, jobs, parks, recreational spaces. Housing is one component that makes community successful, and we need to understand a holistic vision of, of that. I think that this is a national model. Everybody understands that buying a home is important for the community, for building wealth, for building the middle class. And what we're trying to do is grow the middle class, and this is one way you do it. And so I, I want this to become a model, and I'm gonna go and talk about it to my colleagues and to the president and to HUD and say, look, this is the model. Not a tax credit, but a home ownership voucher. It's a beautiful vision of what we could do. And it's simple.